Okay, fantastic. Okay, uh, bear with me. This is my first speech in about a year and a half. So, uh, again, my name is Steve Bender, and I'm coming. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Bocas del Toro, Panama, working on about 17 different environmental projects at the same time. Uh, they all really interact with each other, but I wanted to talk today about the Rotary Reef. Uh, a little bit about our club. Um, I was with uh, past president John Germ about five years on my boat in Newport Beach and explaining some of the programs that our club had, had done. And he encouraged me to start my own Rotary Club, which I did about three years ago. And uh, we, I want, everybody was asking me to start my own. And I said, as long as no one gives me advice, I'll do it. And so I, I wanted to do it a little different. We call it, uh, our, our tagline is not your grandfather's Rotary Club. Out of our 20 founding members, we have over 50% women under 30. So we're definitely not your grandfather's Rotary Club. Uh, another thing that I wanted to coin was embracing the future while respecting the past. I wanted to really, you know, come, come in new. We were doing Zoom meetings before COVID, uh, but also respect the past of Rotary because Rotary has done so much and taught us so much over the years. Um, and so that was kind of my my thing, I want to be, be new, but yet respect the old. Um, another thing I wanted to do, one, one thing that I noticed with a lot of Rotary Clubs is they change direction every year with each president. And I wanted to have a long-term, a 30-year program, a 30-year master plan on everything that was dear to our members. And I recruited all 20 of my founding members, and they're all pretty like-minded people. We, we focus around um, health, and environment, the main, our main things are health and the environment. So we wanted to start a program, <clears throat> a climate program, and we decided to do it in uh, Panama. Uh, we wanted to follow the, the 17 sustainable development goals. And uh, I'm also a PADI certified master diver. And I've been diving for about 30 years and have noticed just a huge change in sea life uh, over the years. I think everybody knows that between 50 and 80% of our oxygen comes from the sea and, uh, uh, and from plankton. Um, if you look behind me on that motorcycle, you, you can see actually some reefs we built in Thailand after the tsunami. And if you look at the growth, the little, the mollusk there on the thing, that's about after a year. And those were also designed to help stop the to help stop um, big fishing trawlers from dragging nets through and, and fishing through nets. So you'll see those would rip up a net. And so that, that, that was very successful. Uh, the marine ecosystems are very diverse, complex and fundamental to, to, to human population. However, they are impacted directly and indirectly through human activity and environmental changes. The, the Caribbean is currently experiencing the biggest mass coral destruction ever recorded. And I've witnessed this uh, in the last, this, this summer, we, we saw 15 and 20 days of 88 degree water, which basically begins to kill coral. And so it's gonna be a big problem. And uh, we've, been, we've been trying to address it in many ways. Um, the issues impacting coral reefs and fish stocks in Bocas del Toro are often, often interrelated and require a holistic approach. Um, what we're trying to do here is develop a program that can be replicable in other areas. I started a, a program called Building Bridges Through Rotary where we, we do things in Mexico and now we're doing things in Central America because we figure it's a great place to start because if we can, if, if we can prove uh, what we're doing works, then it can go North to North America and South to South America. We started, uh, one of the biggest things here is the lack of fish and places for coral to grow. So we started designing little baby rotary reefs um, that we could attach coral starts to. And this is basically the very first one we did about a month ago. And that's just the wire before we put the concrete on it. Then this is after we, this is actually, this is the, this is two different reefs because one is the, the wire structure is under construction and the, uh, the concrete one is, is ready to be placed. This is the first one we did. This is a video of us about 30 seconds after we this first reef. 
And so you can kind of see how it is. The top of the reef is about six feet underwater. And um, so boats won't hit it, even though we have a buoy on top. And it was donated by my club, Rotary Club of Newport Beach. Um, there is a track record of success for the Rotary Wheel Reef. Um, in 2005, um, they, they built one in the Philippines and it's about 70, 70 feet in diameter. And in an area that was um, over, overfished, uh, it was pretty much devastated by large scale commercial fishing. They used dynamite, cyanide and fine mesh uh, from the late 90s to the early 2000s. So before they built this reef, um, uh, maybe a, an average uh, uh, fisherman would get would be two kilos a day. About five years after they built this reef, now they're catching two liter or two, two kilo fish. So it's a proven track record. Um, and so this is a 70 foot rotary wheel. Panama is, we decided to make the 100 foot rotary wheel in Panama to celebrate the 100 years of rotary in Panama. Uh, and so this is the, the reef we've designed and we started building it. This is kind of the structure. It, it's built in modules so we can build it slowly. It might take us, you know, five years, 10 years, whatever, but we just keep, we'll, we'll just keep adding modules to it as we get donations. And we started a, uh, we started just a one module last June and we already have uh, two, two huge angelfish living there, moray eels, a nurse shark. And this is just after, you know, seven or eight months it's already working and there's fish already already swimming there. And so this is basically some of the rough drawings of how it's actually structurally built. If you'll see the base construction is, is real, um, fish love to go hide under things. And so it's designed for fish to hide into and breed. Uh, as you can see, this is an artist rendering of what we'd like it to look like in about 10 years. Um, to fund it, we will be selling um, either bricks or lithographs. Uh, so we'll be selling lithographs, or not, so we'll, for sponsors, we'll receive um, a, a copy of the lithograph or, or uh, the brick. We'll, we're gonna launch this program in July and we'll have a lot more information on it at that time. Um, here, here's a six foot reef, the, the one that you saw before we put it in the water. One of the biggest issues, and marine protected areas are locations where regulatory bodies have restricted fishing in some ways. Studies show that fish biomass within PAs can increase four to five times after establishment, and that the diversity of species within the area increased as well. At the moment, marine protected areas only cover 3.6% of the world's ocean. Increasing this percentage would only be, would be one of the best ways of restoring the world's fish population. This is, we, we, we work with the local government and the police and everything to get our reefs qualified for marine protection area. But there's another <laughs> curveball uh, going through COVID, there's people starving. And we're, we're doing these in an area with indigenous Indians um, that they have to eat. And you know what, they're gonna do whatever it takes to eat. And it's hard to, it's very hard to tell someone they can't fish when their children are starving. So we're trying to come up with other ways to help them um, get food, et cetera, et cetera. We're also addressing a lot of other issues at the same time. So, so this program isn't just about a rotary reef. We actually have over a hundred strategic partners working on many programs uh, between tree planting, we're, we're doing plastic programs, we collect plastic bottles on the beach. Um, we're, we're giving indigenous Indian uh, children uh, plastic bottles with filters in them that last for years, uh, so they say so they won't uh, they won't throw the plastic in the water, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this is just a list of all the the the, the uh, strategic partners we have right now, and we're not even a year old. So we expect to have thousands in the next thirty years. Everybody wants to work with us. Um, a lot of these organizations are very small. And they're very protective. They don't want to. They don't want to work with other organizations, but they respect Rotary so much. They all want to work with me, and they don't feel like we're trying to um, change the way they do. We're trying to support them all. So, along with this program, we will be, um, like I said, we're planting trees. We have a, a ten-year program. We're planting almendro trees because we want to bring back the Macau. 
Uh, we've had a Rot Rotarian donate 40 acres as a private reserve and 10 acres uh, for a Rotary Envir Environmental Science and Research Facility. The research facility will have about eight different rooms in it that we'll let our strategic partners use to study the reefs, the, the jungle, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, we talked a little bit about uh, the Global Climate Pledge. So th this is all of the Rotary Clubs so far we've got signed up in, in the first year. Uh, and so we've got over 200 Rotary Clubs in 2020 recruiting more daily. <clears throat> so once we get the reefs down, we want to cover them with coral. And so this is actually a, a plug of coral that we're breeding. And we've taken, the, the, if you can see the little coral bit there, that is coral that survived 88 degrees and alkaline for over two weeks. And so it's a superior coral. So what we're doing is we're basically breeding uh, that type of coral to place on the reefs. It's kind of a long and drawn out. We can do about 10,000 at a time, but, but we have another plan to, to, to be more scalable. <clears throat> so this, this is actually seeding coral. We actually have a way to breed coral. And once we get a lot of these rotary reefs in, uh, probably in two or three years, we'll apply for a global grant to buy the equipment to actually breed coral. And it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, but it'll, it'll enable us to do millions of plants, or millions of animals instead of thousands. Um, and so that's what, that's what we're building all this thing up for, where we can actually reseed the areas uh, via drone or ship that where the corals already died. Um, now, a lot of you guys don't know, um, we, our club, or I designed a program many years ago called Doc in the Box. And so the, 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 the picture on the left is an actual inside of a 20 foot shipping container I designed to be an AIDS clinic in Condo, South Africa. It's got the highest concentration of AIDS in the world. And we used our Interac members to build it. And so we have a success story of making a lot of product of boxes like this. So what we're gonna do is take that not we'll, we'll build the feeding section for coral inside a 20 foot shipping container. So once we have, have finished this area, then we can move the air, we can move the, the box up the coast to where we can we can breed coral in other areas. And so it's a, it's a, it's a big it's a big project, but it's but it's it's doable and it's provable. So we're excited about that. Um, and I, I mentioned, uh, you know, the, 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 there are people starving down here because of COVID. When I first, a uh, little background, I came here for 11 days last March and I've been here 16 months because there's just such a need. Uh, the indigenous Indians are very, you know, they're, no one's set up for a pandemic, but they can't get to town and get food and medical supplies. So a Rotarian in my club has a place down here. He donated both these boats for us to use to deliver supplies and medical aid to uh, the Nobi Indian tribes. And so pretty much six days a week, I basically deliver food, vegetables, propane, et cetera, et cetera, to the Nobis. The reason I say this is because for us to establish a marine protection area and to work, we have to work, we, we can't just tell people what to do. We have to, we have to help them and support them and train them and educate them. And the best way to, to, to be friendly <laughs> is to support them before we ask for things. So this is a satellite view of Dolphin Bay. And there's villages, there's about four different villages. What we've been doing is we've been supporting them by giving them free healthcare, free dental, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're asking them not to fish within 30 meters of any one of our signs. And because we've, we were nice to them first, <laughs> they're all respecting this, which is no one can believe they're doing, but everybody's respecting our, our marine protection areas. And there is no police or anyone to enforce this because this is like 25 miles from the police station. Steve, you need to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm almost done. Sorry. Okay. Oh, go sorry. ahead. Uh, uh, so anyway, so we're also doing things like tree planting, 
Our, voc our Vocus Bounty program is uh, teaching kids how to, to grow, grow food. I'll biz through this. Here's one of the water bottles we gave away with the uh, water filter. This is us delivering propane. This is us, uh, our rotor actors are all uh, dentists and they're doing free dental, uh, educating people, et cetera. I guess the, what I want to say is we're not, the Rotary Reef is a means to do so much more. And uh, I could talk for hours on this. So just at, I'll send everybody my name and number and I'll be happy to help. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry I went over to John. <laughs> no problem, Steve, that's wonderful. Everything you're doing is wonderful and I really appreciate it.